For the longest time, when we think of minerals, we thought about gold, silver, and copper. And then platinum came along, aluminum, and, and so on and so forth. Now, the government of India has identified 30 list of critical minerals that it wants to keep track of very closely. One more step towards de-dollarization, one might add. What are these critical minerals and what is their significance? We're going to take a quick look at this. Stay with me till the end. Please like this video because I'm going to give you a fair amount of information because today there are many minerals essential that actually impact our lives. So there'll be some anecdote or two. So please watch this till the end. Here we go. Where are the main sectors that these minerals go into? Well, defense, agriculture, energy, pharma, and telecom. So these are not gold and silver. So those are assumed that those are critical already, but these are other things like, for instance, antimony. Antimony, it doesn't really jump out at you as to, as to where it is um, you know, needed but it is needed in semiconductors such as diodes and then infrared detectors, you know, like you have uh, motion detector and things of that nature. Beryllium, beryllium is used in alloys with copper or nickel to make gyroscopes, springs, electrical contacts, spot welding electrodes and non-sparking tools. Um, again, beryllium is not something that is rolling off of the tip of your tongue. Bismuth. Bismuth compounds have been used extensively in medicines and in particular for the treatment of gastrointestinal ailments. And, and uh, this is again, it's a, it's a small amount when it's used as part of medication for gastrointestinal ailments, it has been found to be beneficial. Cobalt, of course, this is something that's fairly common. Cobalt blue, for example. Cobalt also has a bit of magnetism properties. Iron, nickel, and cobalt. All these three can be magnetized. And uh, essentially, you can use them to um, um, make magnets. And it can be also used to, uh, you know, create some medications, medicines such as, not medicines, I would say essential uh, minerals, vital minerals, which is called vitamins. Uh, like B12, you can use cobalt. Um, next one is copper. Of course, copper we know. Copper is made in vessels and uh, it's used in India extensively in kitchen. But in addition to that, you, you are, it's used in construction, building construction, power generation, transmission, electronic product manufacturing and the production of industrial machinery and transportation vehicles. Anywhere you want high conductivity, uh, that's where you would use copper. Gallium. Gallium arsenide is a very popular... 3,5 compound that is a semiconductor just like uh, silicon to use uh, for speed. If you want to have a very fast semiconductor part like a transistor, sometimes they use these compounds like gallium arsenide. Indium phosphide is another one. These are all again specific applications in semiconductors. Germanium. Germanium also has been used in semiconductors. Uh, they are also doped with arsenic and other elements. Graphite. Graphite has huge applications from as simple as pencils to lubricants to electrodes, batteries and many more purposes. Graphite is an alloy of carbon. I think, I'm not 100% sure, I think it is and it's very conductive. In fact, you should never check and see where your electricity plug point is using your pencil. Don't do that. Hafnium is a good absorber of neutrons and is used to make control tools such as those found in nuclear submarines. Indium, indium phosphate I told you that is used in um, semiconductors. It can also be used in touch screens, flat screen TVs and solar panels. Lithium, lithium again is used in electric batteries. The latest ones like the Tesla and the new generation of electric vehicles, they're all used uh, in that. So. Lithium is an essential part today of rechargeable batteries and the rechargeable batteries are used in your cell phone, your tablet, your uh, uh, cameras, what have you, electric vehicles, a lot of usage. Molybdenum, I don't know how many of you have experienced stents in the heart. Molybdenum is one of the most uh, preferred ones because it doesn't oxidize. Uh, it has a minimum impact and it is very, very strong and it improves the strength of steel. So it's thin, it's strong, of course, it's expensive because it's rare. 
and it is used in many other applications such as engines also. If you want to keep the temperature, uh, uh, if, you don't, if you don't want parts of the engine to melt because of the uh, spinning speed and things like that. I remember I talked to you about uh, copper, uh, the uh, crystal blade technology uh, a few episodes ago. Niobium is used in alloys including stainless steel. It improves the strength of the alloys particularly at low temperatures. Nickel. Nickel <laughs> used to be also called as a 5 cent coin in US is called a nickel. The most crucial use of this element is that it is used to make coins. There you go. Making wires. It's used in gas turbines, rocket engines it has, as it has the capacity to resist corrosion even at high temperatures. PGE is platinum group elements and typically you can see them in this percentage but it's not a given and there are many more elements but PGE is used in catalytic converters for cars, buses, trucks and other industrial processes. Some of the new hybrid vehicles they have these catalytic converters based on made out of platinum and PGE. What happens is uh, these parts are easily accessible if you kind of get underneath the car and then they get stolen then the car cannot be used until you get a new part put in these are expensive they are they are then melted for their platinum and used it's very common in the united states so what people do is you know once some somebody loses it then they go in and and have a way to kind of make it very difficult for someone to remove the platinum so it's it's used in many popular car brands including from toyota phosphorus we all know that it is used in fertilizers and mainly that but it also is used in like making sugar for example and and you you use it to bleach the brown sugar to white uh, and, and usually that is from bones phosphorus is available in phosphorus is available in bones human bones and other bones that's what they extract it out of that and use that in the cleaning process ammonium phosphate is made from phosphate ores this is also a very key element in fertilizers Potash is another one that is used primarily in, uh, in fertilizers, 95% in fact, to support plant growth, increase crop yield and disease resistance and enhance water preser preservation. Rare earth element, there are 17 elements and these are essential for permanent magnets that are vital for wind turbines and electric vehicle motors. Rhenium, the use of rhenium are majorly noted in the domains of petroleum and the making of super alloys. Silicon, what can I say? I mean, that is why semiconductor, a semiconductor is something that doesn't conduct unless it is excited. That's why it is semiconductor. Silicon is the basis on which all these things have evolved. evolved. All our chips, everything is using semiconductors. You can have silicon or you can have other uh, variations that I talked about, indium phosphide, gallium arsenide and so on. But those are much, much, much smaller. Silicon is a main element that is used. You need silicon to be very pure and whenever you make a chip, like the chip that goes into your cell phone or anything like that, you actually start with a base of base wafer of silicon and then you, you grow your circuit one layer at a time and it, it typically one layer takes one day to grow and then this thing is baked you, it, it's like you know baking pizza it, that's how the wafers are made very interesting process strontium strontium is best known for the brilliant reds its salts give to fireworks and flares it's also used in producing ferrite magnets and refining zinc tantalum is used in capacitors they are very very popular and uh, Many other electronic components is an oxide layer which forms on the surface of tantalum that can act as an insulating or dielectric layer. Tellurium. Tellurium is used in alloys mostly with copper and stainless steel to improve their machinability. Tin. Tin has many uses. It takes a high polish and is used to coat other metals to prevent corrosion such as in tin cans which is essentially made of tin coated steel. Do you know another place where tin is used a lot? Your Cadbury chocolate, that wrapper inside the plastic thing, it's actually thin tin because tin preserves the shape of the um, Cadbury's chocolate. Otherwise, the heat will melt the chocolate. This tin is supposed to keep it in reasonable shape. I mean, if you keep it out in 40 degrees uh, uh, centigrade for some time, it is going to get out of shape. But at least if you keep it at home, typically that tin wrapper is the one that keeps the thing from becoming gooey. Tungsten, very strong, 
It's an economically important metal which is used for light bulb filament, uh, electron and television tubes, several abrasives and special alloys such as steel stools. Vanadium, about 80% of the vanadium produce is used as a steel additive. It's also a strength adding thing. It adds strength to the steel. For it's used for armor plate, axles, tools, piston rods and crankshafts. Zirconium, zirconium, cubic zirconium, you know what that is, right? American diamond, fake diamonds. Well, that's one way to do it, but these are all grown in labs. Zirconium does not absorb neutrons, making it an ideal material for use in nuclear power stations. Selenium, the biggest use of selenium is as an additive to glass. Some selenium compounds decolorize glass, while others give a deep red color. Cadmium, cadmium industrial uses for uh, are in batteries, Alloys, coatings, solar cells, plastic stabilizers, and pigments. Titanium. Titanium is very, very strong and very, very light. It's as strong as steel, but it's very light. Therefore, you use titanium in things like airplanes. The outer body is made out of titanium or an alloy with titanium. Uh, and uh, these are uh, expensive. At the same time, they are very light and very, very strong. So that brings us to a close of our uh, discussion of the list of critical materials that are going to play an important role in how a wealth of a nation is going to be determined. The ones that you have growing in your own backyard. You know, in India, we have sand mafia mining sand because they think that thorium is there in the sand. So a lot of things have to be starting to put in place. And I'm hoping that a stable government lasts for another 10, 15 years because all these riffraffs have to go. All the regional parties, in my opinion, have run their course I will give Congress a chance if they get rid of the first family, then maybe it has a little bit of a chance. But otherwise, you know, it's BJP that needs to really uh, start cleaning up all these things. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click on the bell button.